it says that the concept of cause and effect. You see? Yeah. Now, um, you see, that's the sort of thing that the Scottish realists do. People like Thomas Reed. Uh, Thomas Reed, I don't know that he does this at length, um, but he seems to say that by virtue of our natural beliefs, uh, human faculties being made to work this way, our natural belief in the existence of material things and the existence of causal connections and so forth, we can go on to prove the existence of God as the designer. And um, when you read um, Charles Hodge, the Princeton theologian from uh, about 140 years ago now, 130, uh, whose systematic theology is one of the standard Presbyterian theologies, uh, he's building on that Scottish realism. So what does he do? He makes use of the cosmological and materiological arguments. Doesn't need to bother with the ontological. If you don't work from the concept, you work from what realistically confronts you. But can, uh, can't respond to that type of argument, maybe I'm not understanding the right, in saying that since we impose that order, then you can't argue from the order because you impose it yourself. Yeah, but you see, uh, that's where the epistemological difference is between Kant and the Scottish realists. They would not admit that we impose our concepts. No. We get those concepts from our direct experience of the world. Yeah. They're more Aristotelian in their epistemology. Not in the sense of real universals, but in the sense of um, learning to think abstractly on the basis of experience. Yes, and you'll find that in the critique of judgment, which we'll get into, um, if not Wednesday, Friday of next week, uh, in the critique of judgment, he does that. Um, he talks about two kinds of judgment. One is aesthetic judgment, in our sense of aesthetic. The other is teleological judgment. Teleological judgment. And um, he, um, he argues that there are four different ways to explain teleology. Four different worldviews. And the notion of a worldview begins to arise. Um, and the one he opts for is the physico-theological. Namely, um, one in which the orderedness of nature is divinely created. Yeah. And it is a kind of teleological argument. But there, he's arguing from the way in which the human spirit with its categories is so perfectly adapted to, the, um, to, to having experience of nature, to the enjoyment of the beauties and grandeur of nature. Yes, so it's more an argument from our aesthetic capacities uh, than from our logical capacities. Yeah. So that Kant originates not only moral arguments for the existence of God, but he begins aesthetic arguments for the existence of God. Yeah, the moral argument comes up in the critique of practical reason, the aesthetic argument in the critique of judgment. And I don't think of any um, dependency between the two. I could be wrong in that, but I don't think of any way in which the one would depend on the other. They may both depend on certain aspects of his epistemology, but I don't think they are dependent on the one on the other. Yeah. Well, okay, let's uh, call it a day, call it a week, call it a weekend, and uh, see you next Wednesday.